Hey guys, welcome to the Calculus Daily Excellence Edition. Uh, this was supposed to come out this weekend. Apologies, it's been a bit of a busy weekend. But anyway, off we go to the first question. Uh, this is an excellence question from um, uh, 2015 um, algebra paper. So what we have is we've got two functions, if x squared plus bx plus c and x squared plus dx plus e, if they have, um, have a common factor of x plus x minus p, then prove that that little function there where b, c, d, e, and p are all real. Now, the first idea to remember in this case is um, the remainder theorem. So with the remainder theorem, you know that if something is a factor, then you get a remainder of zero. So what I'm going to do is because x minus p is a factor, I'm going to substitute um, p in both of the functions because x minus p equals zero, therefore x is equal to p. So I'm going to take my first function, which is x squared plus bx plus c, and f of p, um, f of p for that should equal to zero because of the remainder theorem if it's a factor. So in this case, we're going to have zero is equal to p squared plus b times p plus c. So that was for the first function. Uh, now having a look at um, the second function, also f of p is going to equal zero. And so um, I need to find out f of p for x squared plus dx plus e. So f of p equals to zero and substituting p into the equation itself, I'm going to get p squared plus dp plus e. So once I've actually proven um, both of those functions equal zero, what I could do is I could say that the first, in this case, the orange equation is equal to the blue equation because they're both equal to zero. So what I have is p squared plus b p plus c, and that equals the orange equation, which is also zero. So p squared plus d p plus e. So from here, rearranging everything, um, I both of my p squareds um, they cancel out. So what I have is b p plus c equals d p plus e. Okay, for those of you that are confused where the p squared went, just remember you could have rearranged it anywhere. So, I mean, I could really have p squared and, of course, the orange one coming to this side. I'm going to get negative p squared. And that's how the two p squares disappeared. So what I have is bp plus c equals dp plus e. And from this point, I need to rearrange so that p is by itself. So I have bp minus dp plus c equals e and bp minus dp equals e minus c. p is a common factor, which means b minus d equals e minus c. And so finally, I have e minus c divided by b minus d. And that's how you prove this um, particular equation. Oh, I'll get an answer for this question. So to get an excellence in this question, I believe, obviously, you need to get up to here. Uh, to get a merit, it looks like successfully equating coefficients or equating the two equations in the achieved columns. So probably somewhere here, you're looking at a merit. And of course, for an achieved, um, either doing this or this here. Okay, so that's the algebra question, and we'll be having a look at the integration question next. All right, so with the integration question, we've got uh, two graphs that are shown below in the axis. Um, what they're telling you is, I guess the first uh, part that you need to know is the shaded region has an area of four units square. Okay, so that part is four. Find the value of k. Now, if I was to write this as an equation, I've got k and obviously there's a value of x here. If I was to write this as an equation, it's going to look like this. I've got 
uh, from k to x and the equation I'm looking at is the hyperbola which is 2 over x minus 1 dx equals 4. So the first step I really need to do in this case is figure out what um, this x value is. So I can use that, um, I can do that by actually solving uh, the intersection points of the two equations. So I have y equals to x and y equals to 2 times x minus 1. So putting them equal to each other, I'm going to get x equals to 2 x minus 1. Cross multiplying, I have x times x minus 1 equals 2. So x squared minus x equals 2. x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0. Therefore, my two x values that I'm going to get are x is equal to positive 2 and negative 1. So the negative 1 is here and of course positive 2 is here. So now I've figured out what my equation is going to look like. So it's going to look like this. I've got from k to 2 between 2x minus 1 dx and all that equals to 4. So integrating 2 over x minus 1, I know that it's going to be 2 times ln of x minus 1. And don't really need to do much more to that. That's basically it. And my two limits are between k and 2. And that equals to 4. So substituting my values, I'm going to get 2 ln k minus 1 minus 2 ln uh, 2 minus 1 and that equals to 4. So I have 2 ln of k minus 1 minus 2 ln uh, 2 minus 1 is 1 and that equals to 4. Now ln of 1 is equal to 0 so I could really have 2 ln of k minus 1 minus 0 equals 4 or just 2 ln k minus 1 equals 4 I'm going to run out of space, so I'm going to try and squeeze this in, guys. 4 over 2, so I have ln of k minus 1 equals 2. And taking to the power, getting rid of the ln, I have k minus 1 equals e to the power of 2. Therefore, k equals e to the power of 2 plus 1. Now, you can leave your answer as that. But if you want to simplify it, you're going to get k is equal to 8.39. And that's how you get k for this question. So in terms of um, marks, or, well, allocations, if you get your final answer, that's um, excellence. And I think correct integration with correct limits substituted. So probably somewhere here, if you get up to here, it's a merit. And for achieved... Uh, correct, uh, correct line 7, so I'm, I'm guessing that will give you an achieve, just getting up to that part there. Cool, uh, that's it for this uh, excellence edition, guys. Uh, thank you for watching, and keep up with the daily editions tomorrow.